Welcome to our first recording for day two. In this example, we're taking a look at the workshop that's labeled Packet Dissection. Now, if you attended the class in person, you probably saw your instructor do some measure about what I'm about to demonstrate. And I'm not actually going to use all of the slides for this. I simply want to demonstrate for you what it might look like uh, if we were to have a job interview with a candidate who was claiming to be qualified to be a uh, uh, maybe a network security architect, or maybe they're an intrusion detection analyst, or a senior network engineer, or those kinds of people. We expect them to have uh, varying degrees of capability with regard to networking technology, but especially if they're going to be doing intrusion investigation, they should definitely be able to do much of what we're about to demonstrate. What we have on the screen here is the very packet that was shown in class. And what we want to do is just have a look if if we were talking to an administrator and he was going to uh, maybe show us how qualified he is for a job, we want to see just how capable he is of decoding a packet like this. So to see whether or not we have a qualified administrator who really knows what he's doing, on a job interview, we might present him with this. Now, this, in, this output, you'll note it doesn't have anything from the sniffer explaining what it does. In the class, we do provide you with a TCP IP quick reference. I've actually got mine folded up here. It's even a little bit smaller than usual, but it's this document that came with your course materials. Now, you don't really need this document, though we have given it to people for some years now. However, the biggest reason it's here is this section right here, the part on the IP header, and you could even go further with the other parts of it. Since you're right now in the middle of the networking day, or really the defense and depth day, but we include a lot of information on the fundamentals of networking and how they function, uh, you're going to be working through or have already worked through what each one of these or many of these header fields mean. Now, I'm going to turn this over and put it aside and not refer to it. Because on a job interview for someone at a senior level or claims they're very experienced with this kind of work, I might present them with this, the hexadecimal, and see just how far they can go. Let's see how far I can go. Now, to be fair, this is absolutely not a skill a manager needs, but because of my background, I actually have quite a deep understanding of packets and spent many years taking packets apart. So I have the experience to be able to do much of this. Let's see just how far I can go, and along the way, give you some pointers of the kinds of things that a job candidate should be able to tell you and what it would mean if they can't. For instance, looking at it right out of the gate, I can immediately tell that this is an IP packet. Now, how do I know? Well, my eyes are drawn right here to this 4500. I'll explain what those different pieces mean in just a moment, but the 4500 is sort of a signature for IP traffic. It doesn't have to look that way. It could be IP version 6. It could have a different value here where the 5 is, as I'll explain in just a moment but the vast majority of IP traffic will look exactly like that. So most candidates who have experience, who have actually looked at networks before and looked at packets, they should immediately identify this as an IP packet. Now, if the candidate can't do that, that should already tell you that, that they're lacking some experience or some depth of knowledge. They are not really familiar with what packets look like and perhaps not really familiar with how networks work beyond what the standards say. And I can tell you, the way they actually work is not always the way the standards say. Coming back to this though, if that person couldn't just tell you what this is right off, then that would be the time at which maybe you take out this quick reference chart and hand it to them and see how far they can go. Over the next several slides then, there are questions that we might ask. Let's see how far they can go. But we're going to see how far we can go to show what it looks like when someone does have experience. For instance, I can tell you this is an IP version 4 packet because the very first value there, that, that nibble, these are broken out into two bytes each, two bytes. So each two digits, each two digits, like these two right here, are just one byte in length. This four represents the version of the IP header. The only valid versions are version 4 and version 6. There were older versions before, 
but they than four, but they were never publicly released. They were only in test labs. And there is nothing newer than six, and there is no five version. So version six is the next one we'd see, but four is what we expect today. The number next to that tells me how long the IP header is. That represents the number of double words or two byte entries. That would be five times four, four bytes each, to tell me 20 bytes long. So already I know not only where it starts, but I also know that if I count these out, this header will end exactly here. Now, I didn't count them out. I know where it ends just from experience, but we can count it out too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So that is the last byte, the 20th byte. Moving on from that, the next two bytes that I, or the next byte here, the next two fields that I have here, represent the type of service. The type of service, or there's another name for that, the differentiated services byte, because it's actually been retasked to do other things. Now, in this case, the type of service is zero. It's really not very useful. It's very rarely used today. Moving on for us, though, what's the next field that we have? The next field that we have is the IP total length, according to the standard, but really represents the datagram length. So how long is this packet? Now, this number is represented in hexadecimal, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not really super good at just doing uh, base 16 math in my head, but just looking at it, this would be 3 times 16, which I believe is 48, plus 4, so I believe that this overall length would be 52 bytes. What comes after that? Well, the next field represents the IP identification number and is two bytes long. That's a uh, not really a unique number, but it's a number that's used along with fragmentation in order to reassemble packets. In fact, that brings us right to the next set of bytes. These bytes here all have to do with fragmentation, and this one up at the top tells us that this is currently marked as a do not fragment packet. These over here would be representing the offset of the fragment. So uh, if this were indeed a fragment, where it would go, how we would put it back together. The next two fields are found in this next piece and they're each one byte long. So the first one, just one byte, represents the time to live. So how many hops can this go? How many more routers can this go through? I can see that we have a 3D here. So let's see, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and we have the three here. So it would be 48 plus 13. So if we do the math on that, let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1, 4, 5, 6. That would be a time to live of 61, followed by the embedded protocol header. In other words, what's found inside of this? And this number here tells me this is TCP. That means that I can even draw another line here and say, this is the start of a TCP header. And I'm jumping way ahead now, but I'm now looking at this field and saying, well, that tells me the length of the TCP header. Now that I know it's TCP, six times four is 24. That would take me, well, this would be 20. This would be 24. So this is the end of the TCP header meaning that everything else here is data. I don't know what kind of data yet. We haven't gotten that far. Coming to back to where we are so far, we're, we've currently just figured out what the protocol is. The next field, the next field I'm not going to try to calculate. I hate to try to calculate these. That is the checksum field. So we are just going to leave that alone and move on. That takes us to the last two fields that are found in an IP packet. We have here four bytes. This four byte field represents the IP address of the source. And this field here represents the IP address of the destination. I'm not going to go any further than this. What I'm demonstrating right now would be sort of a level 10. This is the guy I want to hire right now. He knows exactly what he's talking about. And in fact, if we were to take that quick reference that we had before, let's turn it back over, I think you'll find that 
that more or less I've even used the same names that are found on here because I'm so familiar with the IP standard and how packets go together. What would be reasonable? Well, let's say it's not a level 10, this is the guy I need to hire right now. If he needs to use the quick reference, that's okay. That would, though, probably have my estimation. Not a super experienced person, not someone who looks at headers all the time. If, however, he was able to maybe work his way up and got to, uh, say, around the uh, fragmentation, and he didn't know or remember what this was, the time to live, but he knew that was the embedded protocol header. He doesn't know what the checksum is because rarely do you ever look at it, but he could, he could figure out most of these. For instance, he knew these. He knew the, uh, the datagram length. He maybe knew the fragmentation, and he knew the embedded protocol header. Well, you know what? I'd probably put him at a 6, a 7, maybe even an 8. The more he can do, the higher that score goes. If he needed the quick reference to do it, well then, he should not only be able to identify all of the fields, but immediately tell me what they do. So if I said to him, all right, I've given you the header, show me where these fields are, and begin to ask him, what's the embedded protocol header? He should immediately be able to point at this six and say, that's it right there, because he can line up these two and calculate the byte offset to identify where that's located. If after giving him this, he is unable to locate the embedded protocol header, or for instance, sees the 06 and doesn't know what it is. That is going to rapidly diminish his score. He's now headed down toward maybe a 2 or a 1. If I'm looking for someone who has some experience that I need to get on the ground working right away, this is not the person for me. If I'm looking for a junior person who he kind of has seen it before, he knows it's IP, but um, embedded protocol, not sure what the six is, but I know it's a, I know it's an IP packet. He's a one or a two. He might, he might do well with training. For me, I would need to see other evidence during the interview that showed me that investing in the hire for training this person, so even bringing them in as a junior person, I would have to have some confidence that there is some other value he'll bring in the event that he's not able to really take the training well. I can tell you from experience that just knowing uh, how to take a packet apart and identify the fields isn't necessarily going to make the person an excellent analyst. But I can also tell you that, that not everyone can even get the, as far as taking apart the fields. Now one more time before we conclude this, remember. You absolutely do not need to be able to take a packet apart, but as a job interview question, this can be quite a useful thing. And as the security officer or security manager, you should be the person who's interviewing the people who will do the monitoring. If you have a technical staff already, you might work with them to develop additional uh, questions that really are relevant to your business. Just make sure that the questions that your staff are developing are not so technology specific then unless someone has used that specific tool, there's no reasonable way they could answer it. Something like this is often a better question because someone who understands this well can use any of the technology that we already have. If you have additional interview questions that you use, please do send them our way. We're always interested in putting them together. And if we get enough, we might even begin to put together sort of a, uh, a cheat sheet guide for managers seeking to hire technical people. Thank you so much.